It's a very good afternoon to all our viewers and welcome to a new episode of Cairo Local Time that comes your way at uh, 4 p.m. from Saturday to Thursday. My name is Angie Beher and today we have a very exciting episode in store for you. For the next hour, we'll be bringing you the latest news and reports on ongoing activities in Egypt. We'll also be discussing a variety of topics and current events. So first, uh, let's start with a quick look at uh, the news stories coming from Egypt. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the short break. Back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi reiterated on Tuesday Egypt's full backing to South Sudan and its keenness on taking part in the peacekeeping mission in the country. The president also called on Egyptian investors to take part in the development process and reconstruction of South Sudan. The president also said that restoring peace and stability in South Sudan is a priority to Egypt. The president made the statement after talks with the visiting South Sudanese president, Salva Kiir. After the talks, the two presidents held a joint press conference. Addressing the press conference, President Assisi said the talks covered means of boosting bilateral relations. The president noted that Egypt and South Sudan enjoy historical relations. For his part, uh, Kiir said the talks covered the latest developments in South Sudan and the peace agreement to end the civil war there. He noted that certain elements are impeding the peace process in the country. He also noted that several South Sudanese people live in Egypt. Moving to another news item, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi confirmed that Egypt is waging alone a real war on terrorism and that the size of the terrorist attacks witnessed by the country resembled what had taken place from 1967 till 1970. President al-Sisi added that the circumstances that the country is passing through necessitates the efforts of the government with all its institutions to face the challenges of terrorism. In a phone call to the program every day with Amr Adib, CC said combating terrorism is very costly. The head of state added that in the past three months, millions of U.S. dollars which were used to fund the terrorist attacks were discovered. The president also called for the unity of all Egyptians to face the current challenges. Still bringing you the latest with regards to news from Egypt, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi discussed the recent economic reforms and policies in a meeting with the Finance Minister, Amr Garhi. The Minister explained in the meeting that the economic reforms that were undertaken by the government in the past few months have had positive effect on the international evaluation of the Egyptian economy. We have more details in this report. Apologies uh, for the technical error. That was actually President Abdel Fattah Sisi who received the international football player, Mohamed Salah, in the presence of the Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs, Khaled Abdel Aziz. President Sisi spokesman Ali Yusuf stated that during the meeting, Sisi stressed the role that the country plays to support sports as it is an important factor to invest and utilize the youth's energy in useful areas to benefit them and Egypt. Sisi pointed out to the role which Egyptian athletes uh, abroad play since each one of them is considered an ambassador to the country and each one is responsible to represent Egypt to the world in a civilized manner. Sisi believes in the social role of sports figures to develop society and he has appreciated the donation of Mohammed Salah uh, that is given to Tahir Masra Fund considering him an honorary sports figure serving society. Sisi wished Salah and his colleagues in the Egyptian national football team the best at the 31st African Cup of Nations which will start on the 14th of January 2017 in Gabon. And uh, to more news, uh, the Ministry of Petroleum plans to implement 11 projects to develop gas fields in cooperation with foreign partners. Investment in these projects are expected to total 17.5 billion U.S. dollars. They aim to offset the natural decay rate in the productivity of fields and increase production rates. A source at the Ministry of Petroleum said that the projects are expected to produce 1.9 billion feet of gas per day. The source added that the ministry is in negotiations with the foreign partners to speed up the implementation of projects to offset the natural decay rate and to achieve self-sufficiency of gas in Egypt by the end of year 2019.
still uh, joining you with more uh, news. The Bloomberg website listed Egypt as amongst 20 destinations to visit in 2017, saying that the country is now ready to receive tourists after overcoming years of political turmoil. The site said that in addition to heightened safety measures, many brand name hospitality firms have started to recommit to Egypt. Bloomberg ranked the Giza Pyramid as the top of its list for sites to visit in Egypt and determined March as the best time for tourists to be visiting the country. Bloomberg said on its report that Egypt uh, has shed its years of social and political unrest but has yet to regain the crowds and long overwhelmed its iconic sites. It added that travelers will find the country offers a more rewarding experience um, than ever before. The Bloomberg list has destinations from all over the world including Finland, Portugal, Malta, Peru, Colombia and as well as Rwanda. And uh, for more news, and this time on a much more positive note, the Egyptian researcher and head of the cancer treatment with gold nanoparticles research team, Professor Mustafa Said, announced that animal testing for the treatment of cancer using gold has been concluded and is showing promising results. Professor Said made the statement on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of Egypt's National Research Center. Team member Professor uh, Ahmed Abdul meanwhile said the team has verified the effectiveness of the treatment of breast and skin cancers using gold particles in animals including dogs and cats as well as the treatment of melanoma in horses. Uh, full response to treatment among animals uh, has ranged between 87% to 62%. Egypt is considered a pioneer in the field of cancer treatment using gold. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we wrap up the news that we have for you today. And, of course, we are uh, looking forward to hear from you and do share your opinion with us. And we're very much glad to hear from you and receive your comments, questions, and suggestions on our social media pages, www.facebook.com slash CLTNowTV. Also on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash CairoLocalTime4. Uh, and uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, wrap up the first segment. And do stay tuned. We'll be right back after the short break to continue with our segment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The semi-annual report on the government's indicated the reduction in trade deficit and imports as the highlights of the economic file in 2016. In addition, the report pointed out to the implementation of 10 major infrastructural projects. We have more details coming away in this report. Report on the government's indicated that the reduction in the trade deficit and imports as the highlights of the economic file in 2016. The report tackled the general outlines of the economy, national security, social justice and industrial development indicating improvements in each file from April to September 2016. On the economic file, the report highlighted the success of the government to reduce imports by 7.5 billion US dollars and lower the trade deficit by 6.7 billion US dollars. It also indicated the government's success in equipping 404,000 housing units with gas lines during the six months period and the signing of three new petroleum agreements worth 639 million US dollars. In addition, the report pointed out to the implementation of 10 major infrastructure projects and the presentation of three industrial bids for oil and gas excavation as well as the government's success. In addition, the report pointed out to the implementation of 10 major infrastructure projects and the presentation of three international bids for oil and gas excavation as well as the government's success at establishing 187,000 social housing units up until September 2016. On the social justice file, the report indicated the inclusion of 2.1 million families into the Takaful and Karama program worth 7.2 
billion Egyptian pounds directed to provide assistance to poorest families and disabled people, expanding its beneficiaries to 8.3 million citizens in 27 governorates. The report mentioned the accomplishment of the Maritime Shipping Line project to East Africa and implementation of the first phase of Arubiki leather industry and a Mieta furniture industrial city, among 10 other major infrastructure development projects. As the report was issued, a senior economist analyst expected the value of the Egyptian pound to increase by 14% against the U.S. dollar in 2017. The expert said that he believed that there is a change in the dynamics of the capital market after Egypt's decision to liberalize the currency in 2016, expecting the pound value to rise by 14% over the coming year. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're now joined uh, live over the telephone by a guest, Dr. Usama Murad, the economic expert, who will be uh, giving us further insight into this uh, semi-annual report. Uh, Dr. Usama, a very good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, sir, for joining us on Cairo Local Time. And, of course, the semi-annual report on the government performance has showed a decrease in trade deficit and imports as the highlights of the economic file uh, in 2016. Do you see this as an indication for a better economic performance uh, this year, 2017? Um, not necessarily. The, uh, uh, the uh, improvement in the trade uh, deficit is a direct result of the uh, flotation and the uh, liquidity uh, crisis we had, both on foreign dollars and uh, Egyptian pounds. Mm -hmm. Thus, we uh, imported much less because there were no dollars available or it was hard to get. And because of the price increase, uh, the products, foreign products are not selling anymore as good as we did. Our uh, uh, exports, however, did not increase with the same amount the, of the decrease of the export. So the, the real success, which I expect to be happening uh, this half, the first half of 2017, which is the second half of the uh, government uh, budget, that we will witness a rise in the uh, export and uh, the continued slowdown of imports. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Usama, what are your expectations, sir, for this year, and how do you expect the economic indicators to improve in a way that is felt uh, for the Egyptian citizens? We, we are currently in the uh, stabilization and adjustment stage after the flotation. Uh, the government is embarked, embarking on a series of measures to improve the economic uh, environment, Normally, uh, investors respond within two, three to six months uh, to that. So um, I think that we will have some volatility in the market uh, till uh, the first half of the 2017, and uh, we will then witness the fruits of the uh, courageous reforms, uh, very aggressive reforms being uh, taken. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I think that the government uh, needs to uh, uh, lift some of the subsidies again, uh, especially on fuel uh, and its rising uh, fuel prices. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, uh, the government has managed to reduce uh, imports by 7.5 billion U.S. dollars mm -hmm. and lower the trade deficit by 6.7 billion. How do you read uh, those results? And do you think uh, uh, this year we could expect a higher numbers? Um, no, um, doubtful because uh, um, a lot of the uh, inventory uh, was actually depleted. Uh, people did not uh, rebuy the inventory, uh, and this is why we witnessed uh, a shortage in commodities like uh, sugar, uh, wheat stocks went down, and also on pharmaceutical products and components. Mm -hmm. Now, with the flotation of the pound and the availability of uh, dollars to importers, uh, especially those of uh, strategic and important products, I expect that uh, our imports will increase to uh, refill uh, inventory again. Mm -hmm. uh, now, sir, um, the Egyptian people have been hailed uh, for enduring uh, the hardships that have been created by the economic reform policies. Uh, all in the hope of expecting some sort of improvement that they can see and feel. How fast do you think 
Egyptians can expect this improvement and feel uh, uh, some of the economic reform uh, fruits? Um, the fruits impacting personal life uh, of uh, Egyptians will uh, not be before 2018. Uh, on the uh, macroeconomic side and on the government side, we might uh, witness a trend in improvement in 2017 in the second half. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, what, how about the steps taken by the government, in your opinion, uh, to alleviate the burden added to the low-income brackets, uh, including the reforming of the subsidiary system? Do you think that this is a successful uh, step and it will indeed help the lower incomes uh, to alleviate the burden of the, the economy on them? Yes, we, the government needs to accelerate uh, its approach to supporting the uh, low-income uh, population especially moving subsidies from uh, the uh, current uh, system of subsidizing products to uh, monetary uh, uh, support to uh, the people who uh, deserve this. Uh, on the same side, uh, the government to finance this needs to accelerate uh, the privatization program. We have uh, read and heard a lot uh, with different names but uh, the end result, uh, the government needs uh, to get rid of some of its uh, assets and let uh, private sector investment uh, invest and attract uh, foreign currency and also enhance performance. Right. Uh, Dr. Osama Murad, the economic expert, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, sir, for joining us this afternoon on Cairo Local Time. Uh, many thanks for your insight. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, do stay tuned. We'll be right back after the short break for another segment. of Defense Suri Subhi, General Commander of the Armed Forces, has sent a cable of congratulations to His Holiness Pope Tawadros II of Alexandria, Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of St. Mark on the occasion of the celebration of Christmas. In the congratulatory message, the Minister of Defense said he is pleased to congratulate His Holiness on the anniversary of the Christmas of Christ and asked God to give it back to His Holiness and the Copts of citizens to health, goodness and blessings. Armed 
Force has announced that it has finished the renovation work on the St. Peter and St. Paul Church, which was attacked on the 11th of December by a suicide bomber. The armed forces received orders from President Abdel Fattah Sisi immediately after the bombing to renovate the church and fix all the damage in 15 days. The Coptic Orthodox Church announced following the attack that Christmas celebrations on the 7th of January will still be held amid high security measures announced by the Interior Ministry. أحب أشكر السيد الرئيس عبد الفتاح السيسي رئيس جمهورية مصر العربية اللي هو لم يترك المصريين كلهم في أي أزمة حصلت معاهم في الرابع من يناير عام 1971 قام الرئيس الراحل محمد أنور السادات بزيارة لمسجد السيد البدوي بمدينة طنطا شهد مقتنياته التي كان يزيد عمرها على 700 عام فقد كان الرئيس السادات من رواد المسجد البدوي حيث كانت له صداقات مع إمام وخطيب المسجد والذي كان يحضر معه الشيخ النقشبندي الذي بشر السادات بالنصر على الأعداء في ختام هذه الزيارة Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're still with you on this edition of Cairo Local Time, I'm, and I'm delighted to be joined this afternoon in our studio by Mr. Patrick Scott, who is an American citizen who's been living in Egypt uh, since 2015, and uh, he is a freelance travel writer. So he is joining us this afternoon to tell us uh, a bit more about his experiences and his travel writing here in Egypt. Uh, once again, uh, Patrick, thank you very much for joining us you're this welcome. afternoon. Often First, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I can see your Arabic is also quite uh, good. Is it an yeah. easy language to learn? Uh, Saab Leia. Saab Ali. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It gets easier with time. Yeah. <laughs> if you spend more time, I'm sure you'll I be know. fluent. Know, so, know. when was your first uh, visit to Egypt? Uh, the very first time I came here was in May of 2015. That's mm -hmm. when my wife Susan and I were thinking of changing our careers. I was a journalist in America for 25 years. And uh, the last two of those years was in New York. And then we moved to London where I was a journalist for the New York Times mm -hmm. for business and financial coverage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were thinking of changing careers and we were living for the first time abroad in London. And we were thinking we would like to continue that adventure. So Susan wanted to international teach, mm -hmm. and I wanted to freelance travel write. Mm -hmm. And so I came to Egypt to check it out and to fly here. I had some time off. Mm -hmm. And from the moment I got out of the <laughs> airport, where the chaos and just the <laughs> how big the city is, mm -hmm. And the traffic and the beeping and learning that that's a language in and of itself, the beeping of the cars. Mm -hmm. And coming into uh, Zamalek, where I stayed in a hotel, and mm. I had a, a nice uh, balcony in a basic hotel. Mm. And uh, it looked out over the city, and it was just brown with minarets, and it was just, it was beautiful in, mm. a, in, in that sort of way. So mm. I then went out in the streets and was meeting people and went to visit the school my wife was thinking about. Uh, met the people who work at the New York Times here and just enjoyed the city and fell in love with it then. Mm -hmm. So we then moved here full time mm -hmm. uh, in August of 2015. Okay, so that was quite a bold uh, step. Did people ask yeah. you why Egypt? And there's been quite a lot of political upheaval and I'm sure in the media there's been different representations of the yeah. security situation in the country, etc. Uh, did people question your, your, your choice? I mean, why? why? No, no one questioned that. Oh, really? So <laughs> no, they, they no. thought was a good idea. Again, no. Oh. No, you know what? It's interesting. In America, mm. uh, people would be thinking, why are you going to that, Egypt? Mm. What is that? The Middle East is, is very dangerous mm. because 
Uh, a number of people in America think that the Middle East is just one big area and don't have much of a distinction yes. among the countries. Mm -hmm. um, so they would be concerned because of the reporting that they see in mm -hmm. the Middle East. The people we knew in Europe thought that that was interesting, but they were still questioning, are mm -hmm. you sure you want to move to Egypt mm -hmm. after the uprisings? Revolution. And mm -hmm. there was still some incidents of mm -hmm. uh, instability in mm -hmm. Egypt at mm -hmm. the time. But then we were also at a wedding with a bunch of Pakistani people, and when we told them we were moving to Egypt, they were like, oh, that's great, you love it. <laughs> so I think the closer you are to the place... The more understanding. More you know. understanding, mm. because you come here, and uh, people here are like people everywhere, where they want to have fun, they want to have a good time with their family, they want to have a good job and a good lifestyle. Mm. And it is safe here. I found it very safe good. in terms of terrorism, but also personal safety, where mm. I can walk around the streets. I can walk anywhere, really, in Cairo, most anywhere, and mm. still feel very safe. Mm -hmm. So as a travel writer, tell us a bit about what that entails and where you've been and what you've seen and what you've written about. Um, the first story that I did was a swim vacation in Turkey, in the southwest coast mm. of Turkey, with my family, with my wife and daughters, Jenna and Michaela. They're in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And so that was a great adventure where you just spend the week swimming and you're on a boat and you just have a great time in Turkey, mm. in the Mediterranean. Mm. And when I moved here, the editors at the New York Times travel section were interested in me doing a piece of what is it like being here as a Westerner. Mm. So I spent a few months here first and then wrote that story. And one of the common <coughs> excuse me, themes of that story was that um, you can be in some of the most amazing places in the world and you'll be entirely alone. We were in the, uh, the Great Pyramid in the King's Chamber, my daughter and I, Michaela, on her birthday. Mm -hmm. And it was just the two of us. She was doing a ballet dance around the chamber. <laughs> um, and because of the steep drop in tourism, it's very good for visitors right mm -hmm. now, but it's not good for the Egyptian the economy, economy mm -hmm. and for the people who depend on tourism. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, the nicer places that you've visited, not just in Cairo, but have you traveled uh, to the Red Sea, for example? Have you seen also Aswan, all these uh, areas? Mafud Bahar Akmar, Iowa. Fi Dahab. Anabahep Aom. So you like to swim in Dahab. El Maya Amika. So, so you've done some snorkeling and diving? Uh, more swimming. I'm a long okay. distance swimmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I joined uh, the Masters swim team mm -hmm. at uh, Nedi Madi, mm -hmm. at the Madi Club. Mm -hmm. And I belong to the Madi Athletes, which is a group of athletes yes. that I'll talk more about mm -hmm. in a bit. Um, but some of the... I've enjoyed exploring all sorts of places in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We've okay. been to the Black and the White Desert camping there. We've been to Fayum a few times, and I've swum in the Magic Sea, or the Magic Lake. Mm -hmm. um, and we you know, would visit the, the pottery shops in Tunis and go to Wadi Hitan with the Whale Valley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Iskandreya and uh, Salashish and... I love the Red Sea. The Red mm. Sea is beautiful. It is beautiful, yeah. indeed. So you mentioned you have uh, your wife. She's working here and two mm -hmm. uh, daughters. They also mm -hmm. live in Egypt with you? No, they live in America. Okay, so yeah. they didn't take the step to move? No, they <laughs> had jobs. We were already, we had already left them. We li moved to London. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> so, but they uh, visit you often? They do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, my, uh, our oldest daughter is coming later this month. I'm mm -hmm. going to do of some of the kind of stories I do. Um, uh, there's a new company that's called Nile Kayak Club mm -hmm. that started in Cairo, mm -hmm. uh, I think in April of this year, and they do weekend kayaks uh, on the Nile. Mm -hmm. uh, they're at the Muhammad Ali Club in Giza, mm -hmm. and they go by Emmanuel, and they go by Zamalek, mm -hmm. and they do interesting things. They're going to do a paddle from a kayak from that's over five days from Aswan to Luxor. Nice. Mm. So it'll be 200 kilometers that we'll be rowing in the kayaks. Quite so a my daughter is going to come and join me for that. Right. <coughs> so tell me a bit more about the Egyptian people. How do you find the Egyptian people with regards to their hospitality, uh, their attitude in general towards uh, tourists or Westerners? Uh, how do you see the way that they are? 
on the streets you get a lot of welcome to Egypt <laughs> because yeah. there is that there is a natural hospitality and mm. friendliness from the first time that I came here um, you do get the sense that they're genuinely kind and friendly and interested people who are you know just like we you know everyone mm -hmm. um, who is who are interested in learning about where you're from and um, and but then as you get to know people like the people I live in Mahdi mm -hmm. and the people I've gotten to know there through the Mahdi athletes and through the swim team and mm -hmm. through other things that I do volunteering around the community I've built really close friendships with people because they're they're beautiful people they're very warm and um, interesting and people are funny here i like that everyone has a sense of humor mm -hmm. so tell me a bit about uh what is the most popular article or your favorite article that you've written uh in egypt from egypt about egypt <laughs> um i guess one that will be in the new york times this week mm -hmm. it'll be online in a couple of days was when we took <coughs> a uh, nile cruise from aswan to luxor so mm -hmm. we were in the big boat the four-story boat and um, it started in an unusual way because I had not expected, uh, I thought you'd get on the boat and then you go on a cruise. Mm -hmm. But you actually check into the boat mm -hmm. and then you hotel. stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, but it was in between two other boats. Okay. So I was thinking, oh, so you no, passed this through all good. the boats. So, <laughs> so then we went and we saw the, mm -hmm. you know, the giant, uh, the unfinished obelisk, and mm -hmm. then we went to the Temple of Philae through a motorboat. Mm -hmm. And when we were on the, the ship that night, all of a sudden it started sailing. But we apparently were right underneath the, the engine room. Mm -hmm. So our whole cabin was shaking and I, I wasn't sure what was going mm -hmm. on. Um, but then as you get onto the river, it's just amazing to see the river and how immense it is and how historic it is. And so I find that that was like a microcosm of what I experience in Egypt. Mm. Egypt, sometimes you walk out the door here, and it can be you're walking into all sorts of commotion mm. and traffic, and you have to, you know, battle your way through places. But then you come upon something that's just amazing and enchanting. And so and you I forget. Found, <laughs> you do. So I forget. found it started a bit shaky, but it was an amazing experience. Mm. Yeah. The temples really are very beautiful. Yeah, Karnak is mm. spectacular. That's, mm -hmm. I think that's the most astounding thing that I've seen in Egypt so mm -hmm. far with the pylons and that uh, hypostyle hall I think it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, in Egypt I'm sure you've also experienced this moment where people say Egypt and the tourism and the temples and history and ancient Egyptians etc. But did, before you came did you have a, a vision of modern day life in Egypt? I mean always when people come visit Egypt they have certain locations that they want to go visit but they don't right. always have this perception that there's modern day living and there's malls and shopping and places to uh, see that is everyday life. Did you have that perception before you came? Um, I don't know what I have thought. There's a, for a lot of people Egypt is on their bucket list yeah. but it wasn't on my bucket list. I was, it wasn't some place that I had been, you know, wanted to mm. be. But having been here for a year and a half, I love it. I love living here and mm. experiencing everything about the country. Um, but we had been to China back in the 1980s, and there were still areas, wherever I've traveled around the world, we've done a bit of traveling mm. before we had our daughters, and even after. Um, and I've been to other developing places, and they have modern aspects to mm -hmm. it, and they have ancient aspects to it. So I wasn't thinking that, okay. I wasn't amazed that there were malls mm -hmm. here. But we did go to the movies on Sunday mm -hmm. night to Cairo Festival mm -hmm. City. It was the first time I was there. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you don't see a lot of uh, Christmas decorations mm -hmm. around in just in the old city mm -hmm. or in uh, Wistel Ballad mm -hmm. or in Mali some. Mm -hmm. So but that was mall, a new <laughs> And because it was Christmas, mm. too, the Coptic Christmas, mm. there were thousands of people there. Yeah. It was just an amazing it's holiday scene, season. You know, and everybody mm. was out mm. eating. And Speaking about eating, uh, what's truck? your uh, favorite Egyptian traditional meal? Have you had a few? Like ful, tameya, kushari? Uh, yeah, flafel. I love ful. There's a friend of mine, Hashem, who makes the Iskandreya ful. Okay. That, uh, it's very good. Um, mm. I like full, I like uh, koshari, I like uh, anabahepa, uh, shawarma. Last night I came home, I thought when we were home for Christmas, mm -hmm. 
we didn't eat a lot of uh, Middle Eastern food because we had a lot of other options. Mm -hmm. But when I came back here, I was again craving shawarma. So I had shawarma last night. <laughs> uh, Molaheya, I like. I like all of the Egyptian foods. I like Lebanese, Middle Eastern food. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in addition to your trips and articles, what other activities besides swimming? I'm sure you're quite a big fan of swimming. Uh, what do you do for fun? Like, what do you do just on a random weekend? How do you spend your time? Um, well, doing several things. Mm. Start the day. There's, so there's a movement in Egypt, which is interesting, that's happened in the last few years. That's like with triathlons. Okay. So that's when you swim, and then you bike, Cycle. and then you run. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one that Trifactory puts on in Salashish. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Mahdi Athletes group that I joined on Friday mornings in training for this triathlon, which was in December, mm -hmm would do bike rides to the Ein Sokne gates. So because it's very difficult to bike here, not just because they're expensive, mm. but because of the pollution and the roads and the traffic, Crowds. it's very difficult. Mm. So on Friday mornings, we start our weekend taking a bike ride of 70K or some distance, going to the Ein Sokne gates and doing that a couple of times. And then coming back, um, and then after that, I usually volunteer in Showbright, teach English to uh, Egyptian children through a foundation called Koz Kaza. Mm -hmm. And they started a program about eight years ago in Showbright where they take the children from that area. And they teach them about the environment and the family and health, and they teach them art, um, ethics, and they have also programs for the women. So I had met the people who run the foundation and they were interested in starting some English classes for the students so uh, one of the colleagues of my wife Tyler and I do that on Friday mornings mm -hmm. and then we go out exploring in the old city we'll go to the tent makers bazaar we'll go somewhere uh, interesting interesting Motham, garbage city mm -hmm somewhere around the city, and then we'll go out with friends to dinner at the lovely restaurants in Mali. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> so, um, your wife and you, how long do you think you'll be staying? Do you have like a time limit, or is this well, as long as Well, the contract you're... was for one year. Okay. And so, she renewed the contract for two years because we enjoyed living here. Mm. And now it's a question of whether uh, we'll stay for another year, or we're interested also in visiting a lot of countries. So we may go to Southeast Asia after mm -hmm. this and continue our adventure. Mm -hmm. And what uh, uh, place in Egypt do you still want to visit and write about? Uh, Siwa, mm -hmm. I haven't been to. Um, I hear the sea in Marsa Matua is Beautiful. fabulous, mm -hmm. so I have to go there. Um, and then Marsa Alam, I would like to go to too. I Wonderful. haven't been there yet. So we'll be looking. So we'll be looking forward uh, to reading more about these places. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Patrick uh, Scott, freelance travel writer. I'd like to thank you very much, sir, for joining us this afternoon and Cairo Local Time. It's been an absolute yeah, pleasure. My pleasure. Thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, do stay tuned. We'll be right back uh, with our tourism magazine after the short break. Stay tuned. Necropolis and residential settlement were uncovered in Abydos in Suhog, almost 400 kilometers south of the temple of the New Kingdom, Feru City 1. The settlement and early dynastic period necropolis were found during excavation by an archaeological mission from the Ministry of Antiquities. Mahmoud Afifi, head of the Ancient Egyptian Antiquities Department at the Ministry of Antiquities, said that the newly discovered site could belong to high officials 
or architects responsible for the construction of the tomb and funerary walls of the pharaohs of the first dynasty. Afifi described the discovery as very important because it reveals new information that could change archaeological understanding of the history of ancient Abydos. Excavators also uncovered 15 large mud brick tombs of varying architectural design. The surface area of each, Afifi said, could reach 70 meters larger than that of the first dynasty royal tomb. He added that a group of mud brick huts were also discovered within the settlement as well as a collection of artifacts from daily life including the remains of a large number of clay vessels and stone tools used in land cultivation which suggests that the huts could have belonged to workers supplying the settlement with provisions. The Ministry of Antiquities has announced that Komishu Efe catacombs in Alexandria are safe and have not been submerged in water as published in some news reports and on social media. In a statement, head of the Central Administration for Maintenance and Restoration, Gharib Sombol described the social media accounts as lies and unfounded claims. Sombol said that the cat Combs are unharmed and that water machines installed in the surrounding area are working efficiently and reduce the subterranean water level to protect the site from flooding. He added that nothing has damaged the wall paintings of the main tomb. The only thing to have fallen was some two centimeter thick mortar from the restoration carried out in the 1980s which doesn't threaten the catacomb or its walls. All the wall paintings and reliefs are in very good condition and have not collapsed. The United States Agency for International Development has undertaken studies as a comprehensive project to reduce and control the subterranean water level in the area. He said the project will bid for approval in early December. The Komushu Afa catacombs are suited to the west of the Pomi Pillar in Alexandria and are considered the largest and most important burial site dating back to the Roman period in Egypt. Komushu Afa, meaning the Hill of Treasures in Arabic, was uncovered accidentally in 19,000. It contains a mixture of Roman, Pharaonic, and ancient Egyptian decorative elements that were common in different eras in Alexandria. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do wrap up uh, today's edition of Cairo Local Time. We do hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, tomorrow, 4 p.m., again, Cairo Local Time will be joining you with a new cast and a new crew. So do join us then. And, of course, uh, we are looking forward to hearing from you on our page, www.facebook.com slash Cairo Local Time Now TV. You can also uh, visit us at twitter.com slash Cairo Local Time 4. And you can also email us all your suggestions and comments at Cairo Local Time 4 at gmail.com. Once again, many thanks for watching. My name is Andrew Meyer. Goodbye.